Yeah, pretty healthy. You know, a couple guys that a little nicked up, but nothing that we're overly concerned with. And uh, we'll, you know, we'll have a more clear picture uh, come Wednesday. But we're in decent shape. Mm-hmm. I guess AJ and uh, Hayward were the announced ones. Today. Yeah, and they both went back in the game. All right. Two games in, does Marcus look any different to you as a quarterback than he did in your previous experience? Is there something that you've noticed that he's does does now, doesn't do now? Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of little things. That obviously, there's uh, in every game. There's things that you know we need to clean up and uh, improve. But um, I think overall, I mean, he's in a different spot, and we'll continue to to improve and get better, especially in the situational football. There's so much new on that side of the uh, ball. Is that just going to take some time to kind of come um, uh, together? And are you seeing progress from that offense? Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of progress. Um, so, you know, there's things that we need to do uh, better in the red zone and uh, third down. It hasn't all been tragic, but obviously we haven't uh, won the last two games. So we feel a lot better right where we're at offensively after two games than we did a year ago, if that's a uh, comparison. Well, that's a good comparison, but that's just the truth. Um, like I said, I think our low line's playing really well. They did a nice job yesterday with the plan on, on Donald. Um, so they've been protecting well. Pockets have been clean for the most part. And we've run the ball, excuse me, we've run the ball well to, relatively well to, for, through the first two games. To that end, I mean, and again, it may be comparing apples to oranges, but starting the season 0-2 last year, starting the season 0-2 this year, but feeling different about where you are, what does make you feel different about where this team is in comparison to what you're saying a full year ago? Yeah, I mean, it is what it is, and you have to face the fact that we are 0-2. Um, but it is a completely different situation, uh, completely different team. Um, so certainly younger at other spots, but there are a lot of these young guys that are, we feel are progressing pretty well. And certainly we've had more production offensively than we had the last year and, and defensively as well. And so, like I said, we, it's, the game's usually always going to come down to turnover margin red zone and, and situation, which you can now put in third and fourth down. So we, we got to continue to make progress there, and especially in the critical situations. How's Caleb McGarry played? It's been pretty solid, and as, as the whole offensive line has. How's Wilkerson doing the first half starter? Uh, left guard, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I think Elijah's handled that transition really well. I thought yesterday was his best game. And um, like I said, it was a heck of a challenge. We know you're going to get matched up. They moved on a lot of spots, which we anticipated. And that's what they got a good staff. And that's what good teams do. And our guys handled it and they adapted. Like I said, it wasn't perfect, but uh, that, I think there's been a lot of progress over there. And the young guys, um, you know, a lot of people played the first time yesterday. Uh, Troy, how did he do in his uh, linebacker action? And then uh, the running back out over here, 10, ten carries. But, uh, yeah. So um, we'll start with Troy. You know, we've got a lot of uh, – I like where Mike, uh, Mike Walker and Rashawn Evans are at. Mm-hmm. So Troy went in there because I think he can, he can help add and we'll continue to try to enhance the roles. Of it. But, but that's no, it's no shot at anything Michael Walker or Rashawn Evans have done. It's just, Troy's a good football player and we're bringing him along the right, uh, the right way. Yeah, obviously, everybody could feel his impact yesterday on special teams. Mm-hmm. And uh, Tyler Algier. You know, he got 10 carries. I thought he ran pretty well, and he's uh, becoming very dependable in protection. Has Mike Walker surprised you in, in as quickly as he's picked it up? I know you felt good about him coming in, but he's played all the I wouldn't call it a surprise. I've been pleased. Uh, we had a lot of faith in him, and then, you know, the way he developed last year and the games that he had to play in there, especially stack linebacker behind the ball. And he's continued, and now, you know, he's got the green dot, and he's right. continued to develop, and I like – his football IQ, and he's making plays. He, make a head of, he made a hell of a play yesterday uh, on that interception. When you think back to the, the play that Darren Hall made, it really felt like it was kind of the um, epitome of kind of what this team is, like not giving up and mm-hmm. until the play's over. Is that something that you kind of felt even in the moment as it was happening? Absolutely. We appreciate our guys, and I think that's what's showing up, the resiliency and the you know, way I've always looked at it, you're never out of the fight. And so 
you know, they completed it. That's a pretty good player. They, you know, third down, got to have it. We actually had help inside on there. And you talk about a trust throw between Stafford and, and, and Cup. And Darren broke on the ball, didn't give up, punched it out. And then what I thought was more impressive was he was able to go get the ball and stay in bounds. And uh, pleased with what, you know, the progress Darren's made. Mark, you get such a young team. How do you feel like they're absorbing week to week now that you've got a couple weeks to develop a game plan? That's one of the toughest things for a young player to get and to still go play football. It is, and because it's such a chess match between series. Like I said, a lot of really smart players in this league and coaches, and that's a lot of times the biggest adjustments. It's how quickly the other teams adapt, and we have to adapt, and a lot of that you're trying to plan out, and then sometimes there's things that come up and you've got to move guys around, whether it's injuries or, or whatnot. So. I'm very pleased with those guys. Um, it's a continuing education, especially being aware, focused, situational football. You know, um, I guess they're one and one. Uh, Geno Smith, how much did he take? He go back and look to Geno from uh, the recent years and, and, and uh, yeah, break down the West Virginia tape. Huh? Break down the West Virginia tape. The 2013 tape. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously, uh, Geno, you know, when I was in Tennessee, we went against him uh, when he was with the Jets. Uh, we've got a couple games now to watch him, what he's doing in Seattle's offense and how they're handling their personnel. Um, I think Shane Waldron's done a pretty good job, their offensive coordinator, and you know they've got a lot of really good skill personnel. Uh, tight end, they like to use all three of those tight ends. Uh, Disley and, and Fant and, and Kobe Parkinson, and then the receivers, Metcalf and Lockett. There's good one-two punches, anybody in the league. They had a good one. And uh, they got a lot of weapons. Yeah, you got Penny back there at back, Kenneth Walker. So they got two young tackles. I think they're pretty good players. Defensively, um, you know, they've changed over time. They have. For some of the uh, tricks they still uh, try to hold on to. Well, you see the, the speed and the intention that they try to go and uh, disrupt the football. And I know that's been a big point of emphasis for them, getting the turnovers. But it's a completely different front than the first iteration when Pete got there. and. Uh, Part of that staff, uh, Gus Bradley, Dan Quinn, Jerry Gray, those guys over there early, and they were running so much of that cover three, and they had so much success that you saw a lot of those guys get jobs other places, and that kind of was a trend. Now you've seen them kind of reshape what they're doing, a lot more five down fronts, a little more three, four based. Uh, Clint Hurt, right, it's, he's a different play caller. Um, you see some of the stuff on the back end that's changed, a little more quarters and some of the different variations they're playing right there. So it, it's changed, but you still see Pete's emphasis, the way they attack the football, ball disruption, team speed, all that stuff showing up. And uh, how can you gauge the, on, uh, on the run defense? How'd they do yesterday? Because they went, they didn't, uh, you know. You know, they, they, they threw uh, some different looks at, at San Fran. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, San Fran's got good players. I mean, Debo. Uh, made a couple guys miss on a tackle and was able to, to uh, get through there for an explosive run. And um, you know, San Fran, I mean, it was a pretty good game in the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. So, it, like I said, we know it's a challenge. Uh, this is one we know we're going into one of the most, uh, yeah, it's probably one of the best environments mm -hmm. you can have home field advantage. Um, we know it's going to be loud, and we got to account for that.